Hi, I wanted to show everybody a quick and easy way to make a face mask um, using stuff that you might already have around the house or some things that it would be easy to order online. I don't recommend anybody getting out and going to the store right now, um, but maybe you have some of these things around your house. So let's first talk about what you're going to need to make your face mask. The first thing you'll need is some cotton fabric for the uh, front and back of the mask and then you will need some kind of interfacing. This is uh, one kind that I found at Walmart on clearance and um, it's Ollie Fun and this is 100% polypropylene. You can also find this at Joann Fabrics by the Bolt and I'll put a link uh, to the Joann Fabric product um, in the comments below and um, the what you want to look for is a non-woven kind of interfacing so whether you use this 100 percent polypropylene which you might even have around your house in the form of a reusable shopping bag this is what it looks like up close it's got this little texture to it and um, it is not woven it's called spun bond material and uh, the way they make it is they kind of uh, fuse these little uh, fibers together in a way that makes them uh, water repellent and um, that's going to give you a little bit of added protection inside your mask. Um, you can also use a medium weight interfacing. I do not recommend knit interfacing. This is just a Pellon brand, medium weight, uh, fusible interfacing. And this is the kind that you would iron on to your cotton fabric. So if you're using an iron on interfacing that maybe you have left over from a previous project, sewing project, you would iron it on to your cotton fabric before you begin. And you would skip the step of sewing in the black polypropylene interfacing that I'm going to be using today. Uh, so that's just a little adjustment if you have some leftover fusible interfacing and even if it's featherweight that's okay too or um, I believe there's also a sheer weight but um, this is 100% polyester it's still non-woven so any kind of non-woven material inside would be great. Um, a, a lot of stores have reusable shopping bags made out of the polypropylene. Uh, this is a fabric that's often used in personal protective equipment um, in hospitals and that's why I chose this kind of fabric here. Um, I do not claim that this mask will keep you from getting any disease at all but um, it's certainly going to just help with dust and water uh, resistance, uh, droplet protection, that kind of thing. But I make no claims that this mask will keep you from getting coronavirus or flu. Um, so use it at your discretion. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about a few more supplies that you will need. And well, another thing you may have around the house, um, besides a shopping bag um, that you could uh, repurpose into uh, the lining of the mask, um, or the interfacing that you could also use um, is maybe have some opaque tights um, and we're going to be using opaque tights as the ear loops. I chose these because they're softer and a little bit more flexible and more stretchy so they're more comfortable uh, to wear. You could also use elastic hair ties, um, even uh, child size leggings, um, and you, what you do to form the ear loops is you just take the opaque tights and, oh, let's see here. You're just going to cut off a leg and then you'll cut about three quarters of an inch to one inch round, okay? See here, and then you're going to cut it in half like this and this um, is depending on the size of your tights um, you probably want anywhere from four and a half to six inches 
um, maybe smaller than four and a half inches if you're making a child size mask. But for an adult, I would say no less than four and a half inches long. If you need to shorten it, you can just snip off a bit and um, there we have about, uh, about five inches long right there. Um, and that's what we're going to be using for this mask that we're gonna make right now. Let me set that aside. Um, and then of course you will need some thread. You'll need a few straight pins, not a lot. Um, and your sewing machine. You could do this all by hand, uh, but I like my sewing machine. You will also need a pattern and I'll put the link for the pattern um, in the comments. Uh, this is the pattern I use. They have three sizes here, one for a three to six year old, a seven to 12 years, uh, teenagers or a uh, woman size and then a larger size for a man and again remember that if you're making one for a man you probably want um, six inches uh, for your ear loop all right so let's get started sewing this together first of all you're going to um, using your pattern which I, I failed to mention this you need to add a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around the pattern, okay? So it does not come with that seam allowance added, but you do need to add that when you're making your pattern. Once you've cut out four pieces of cotton fabric for the front and back of the mask, uh, you need to cut out as well two pieces of your lining, whether that is fusible interfacing or whether that is polypropylene interfacing or craft fabric, okay? You're going to take two sides of your fabric, the cotton fabric, and you're going to put them right sides together. Okay, so I have my right sides together, and then you're going to take one side of the interfacing and put that outside of the two pieces of cotton fabric. So you're sandwiching your cotton fabric in between your interfacing. Now if you're using that fusible interfacing, uh, remember that you will skip this step. Instead, you will iron on the fusible interfacing to the wrong side of your cotton fabric. And then once you've fused that interfacing to your cotton fabric, then you're going to sew all of these pieces together. So it's going to be interfacing, cotton fabric, cotton fabric, interfacing. I like to start sewing down at the wide end here, and we're going to sew all the way up to the to the thin point. All right, so we're going to start at this uh, wide angle and go to the thin angle. Make sure all of your sides are lined up. This is just a straight stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance, and I do back stitch to make sure everything stays in place and is locked down. Okay, set that aside. Now taking your other two pieces of cotton fabric, again, line them up with right sides together. And we're gonna take that wide angle and sew a straight seam at a quarter inch seam allowance. Lock it down. All right, so you can see here, we've got these round seams and they're both sewn at a quarter inch seam allowance and then we're gonna clip these, clip both curves, okay? So to do that, you'll take your scissors I leave about an inch or a little less at each corner here so that I have plenty of room for my next seam. And I'm just going to clip all the way around and over all the way over to this corner so that it ends up looking like this here, okay? Once you're done clipping the curve, I do trim here down to about an eighth of an inch, okay? and I trim here. If these are really long, you can go ahead and knock those off as well, but I don't always do that. So now we have our trimmed and clipped curve. 
if you're new to sewing, anytime you have a curve, you've got to clip it so that you have your fabric can bend there at that seam. And here I've also clipped the, um, this is going to be the inside of the mask that goes against your nose and mouth. And I've already um, clipped this curve here. I'm going to trim it to an eighth of an inch. Then I'm going to take the fabric only section and I'm going to turn it right side out and I'm just going to press all the way up into that seam to make sure I've got it turned all the way. You can see I've got a nice uh, curved seam right there. And then I'm going to tuck it inside my other piece with the interfacing attached. And I'm going to line up the seams at the chin and here at the bridge of the nose. And I'm going to be pushing the fabric only side up into this seam here of the interfacing side. Make sure those seams are lined up. And then you can see here I've got all three pieces of fabric lined up really nicely on this curved side. All right, and now I'm going to sew this together. I don't pin anything yet. Because this is non-woven, there are no holes in it, and so if you pin through your interfacing, no matter what kind of interfacing you're using, um, if you pin through it, it's going to put a hole in there and potentially uh, some kind of bacteria or virus cell could get in there, so we're not going to pin into the black interfacing at this point. So now I'm going to sew at a quarter inch inseam, again, straight seam, right around that curve and over the bridge of the nose. When I get to the center seam, I like to uh, put my needle down and turn the fabric. And I'm turning that fabric. It just helps with the bulk there at the bridge of the nose. All right, now that we've got the inside and the outside sewn together, we're going to clip this curve here. to help it turn and uh, not to be so bulky where it's going to be curved over the cheekbones. Like that. Okay, and the other side. Be very careful whenever you clip the curves not to cut your seam. If you cut your seam, you'll either have to start over or sew a little bit uh, into um, a little bit you know, further down uh, so that your mask won't come apart at the seam there. Like this. And then we are also going to trim this corner so that we won't have a big bulky spot right over the bridge of the nose. I cut it close to the seam. You could cut a V here. I just cut it straight across to make it simple and fast. All right, now we're ready to put in the ear loops. So I have my ear loops again. I've just cut these out of opaque tights, um, and uh, those are easy to find at Walmart or Target. You might even have some around your house um, that are new. These are new that we bought and nobody wore. Um, so to do that, you're going to open up your mask so that you are sliding the ear loop in between the right sides of the cotton fabric all the way up to that top seam there at the cheekbone seam. Uh, and then now we are going to pin just to hold it in place, but make sure you're only pinning in the seam allowance, okay? Uh, that way we're not puncturing the uh, interfacing here over the mask, just 
in the interfacing, I'm sorry, not the interfacing, in the um, seam allowance where um, it won't really matter anyway. You can see that here. Reach inside. Again, I'm gonna take the other end of the ear loop, curve it around, bring it to the edge of your fabric, leave enough space for your uh, seam here along the bottom of the mask. Remember it goes in between the two pieces of cotton fabric um, where they are right sides together. I'm pinning again inside my seam allowance, inside my quarter inch seam allowance, and then I'm gonna sew that. I like to back up several times over the tights, the ear loop, to make sure that they don't come out when you're wearing them. So you can see here I've backed up several times over that ear loop piece. Okay, I'm going to put the other one in. In between the right sides of the fabric, the cotton fabric, all the way up to the cheekbone seam. And they roll up a little bit, that's fine, just let them roll up, it won't be a problem. Remember to pin only in your seam allowance. Take the other side around here, leave enough room for your bottom seam allowance. And we'll sew this side. Now you've got the ear loops in and we're going to clip these corners. You can clip, clip them at an angle or I kind of do like a little notch. Either way is fine. These masks are very simple and easy to make even for a beginner who's not used to sewing. Then you're going to turn your mask right side out and you can see the ear loops here. Make sure you Press at those seams to get them all the way out. If you need to, you can use a pencil at the corners to make them pop out. Okay, I like to fold it so that the side with the interfacing is going to be um, out, like uh, the outside, and the side that's just fabric is gonna be up against your nose and mouth. Uh, it just makes it a little easier to sew it uh, like a basket, like this. All right, so now um, we've got to sew up this bottom seam. And you will be pinning um, this even through the interfacing, but I just pin right at the very edge where I'm going to be sewing. So we're going to fold up the bottom raw edges here about a quarter inch or so. Just tuck it in. And you might feel like it doesn't line up quite right. That's okay, don't worry about it too much. It'll straighten out as you sew it. And then I am pinning, but I'm pinning right at the edge. I'm gonna be sewing right at the edge. And let's see here. So you wanna put that needle, oops, sorry y'all. I'm going to put that needle right in here, very close to the edge where I'm going to be sewing, okay? Now let me fold this side in. It gets a little bulky at that center seam. Don't worry about that. Uh, just match it up as, as much as you can. You may have to take out your, your pins and stretch it a little bit and uh, figure out which way you need to pull to get everything lined up just right. I'm 
but you can see how close the pin is to the edge here and that's exactly where we want to be sewing um, you could sew this by hand um, that would be fine do some kind of hidden stitch or whip stitch or something um, but I'm going to be top stitching with the sewing machine so I've got it pinned here we go almost done I put this right at a quarter inch, I mean very, very close, and then I scoop my needle all the way over to my right, and here we go, straight stitching. to stop put my needle down and then at the center seam kind of adjust and smooth out the fabric um, around because it's kind of a curve right there and sometimes my machine needs a little coaxing to go over the bolt there at that center seam but that's okay And you can see here where I've just top stitched there. You can see there's a little catch. I'm not too worried about that though. Then I'm going to do another top stitch here across the cheekbones and bridge of the nose just to keep it from getting too puffy. It helps everything stay in place. Still, I've got my needle scooted all the way over to my right. I go right up to that center seam and then I turn a little bit just to help ease it around that bridge of the nose. And we are done with our face mask. Go. You can trim up any loose threads there. And these don't take very long. Once you get used to making them, uh, they take me less than 20 minutes a piece. And you can really get an assembly line going if you've got some kids that are good at cutting. I would say let them cut out that interfacing and your cotton fabric for you and it won't take very long. Um, if you feel led to do so, I encourage you to uh, make uh, plenty of these for your family and then also uh, for friends who might be nurses or doctors or work in hospitals um, and uh, to donate some of these to your local hospitals um, or fire departments. I know they're often in need of masks and I hope this helps you uh, feel confident to make your own face mask. Again, I don't claim that this will keep you from getting any particular disease, but it's oftentimes prudent to wear a face mask out in public these days. Thank you.